Ladies and gentlemen, Side Strafe here with another episode of The Strafing Run. And as always, the show is designed to keep everyone up to date on a fairly regular basis. Now, with that said, the footage in the background is of Arma 2 and its mission editor. I thought I would just create a brief firefight to keep everyone amused while I rant and rave about the general happenings. And, of course, I just kind of wanted to actually include the editor itself so you could see some of the steps it takes to create something simple. And this is pretty much as far as I can get. I don't know any scripting or anything more advanced. Most I can do is place down some units, add a couple of waypoints or triggers to just end the scenario once I've killed all the bad guys. So, also on that note, I just wanted to remind everybody who has bought the game just for DayZ, there's a really good tactical realism simulation in that box or in your digital copy on Steam. If not one of the best, and perhaps forever the best, tactical sim in the world. I mean, it's just a great game. And for those of you not playing it for other reasons, you're missing out. Now, you know, I have to emphasize, this is all about realism. It's not a Hollywood action shooter. It's not like Battlefield. It's not like Call of Duty. Those games are good on their own respects, on their own rights, but they're completely different. You want to think back, if you ever enjoyed Rainbow Six 1, 2, even 3, and Ghost Recon 1, the original games, if you ever enjoyed those, if you ever enjoyed the original Operation Flashpoint, which was made by Bohemia, same company that makes Arma, you know, if you ever enjoyed those games, sure, you can really get into Arma 2's normal game. It's single player, it's multiplayer, there's hours upon hours of content. The community has modded the heck out of the game, there's all kinds of mods and tweaks and changes and different things that you can get into. The game is so open to, to, to playing with its editor, you know, there's mod tools, there's so much to, to, to be able to do with this title, and that's awesome for $30. I mean, obviously, originally it was more than $30, but, you know, today for $30, you can get this, this suite of tools as well as this just great game that gives you hours upon hours of, of gameplay within almost like a sandbox world. So there's so much more there than just DayZ, and there's so much more than what most typical AAA titles would ever include for their $60 fee. Because you have to remember one thing, publishers want you to pay for a game and then buy DLC later on and then uh, or expansions or, or buy their sequel the next year. Whereas Bohemia does not belong to a publisher, they're independent. They take care of their own game, which means they can release when they want to, they make the product the way they want to, or base it off of also community feedback. So, you know, really good game. And, you know, you have been obviously supporting DayZ, but you're also supporting an amazing independent developer that actually makes a really cool game other than DayZ. Uh, obviously, I say other than because Rocket, the guy who originally created the DayZ mod, now works for Bohemia. So, you know, I would say it's a matter of time before DayZ becomes either its own game or own DLC one day. Uh, what you know, whether it's for the current engine or, or an Arma 3 engine, who knows? But it's probably down the pipeline. Uh, one of the rumors, of course, I believe even from E3, was that they told the guy to work on DayZ full time. Um, so, I mean, that kind of tells you something. Bohemia does love DayZ. They do appreciate it, and they want it to succeed, and I'm sure that they, you know, like to make some coin off of it one day. I mean, they've got to make money somewhere, guys. Let's face it. I would do the same thing. You know, it's you got to survive. you got to put food on the table, so there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, DayZ could make its own, you know, great product one day. Uh, what that says about, you know, the Arma 2 version of the mod itself, I really don't know, but, uh, you know, again... Just my little public service announcement to remind everybody that there is an, another great product in, in that package that you bought for 30 So moving right along, a little bit more about Arma, Arma 3 really. Uh, obviously we know that it's kind of been delayed to 2013. Uh, when in 2013? I'm not sure. Hopefully fairly early, but uh, there will be a community alpha, hopefully in the summertime coming up soon, that we'll get to play around with. Stratus Island, I believe. Uh, so that way we can kind of mess around with some of the things we saw in some of the E3 videos and uh, I'm sure run a couple of missions and hopefully play some online play to really, you know, test out the game, squash a lot of those bugs and, and really make the game shine when it eventually releases. And 
And I want to also point out too that when it does come down to a community alpha or beta testing or whatever, there's two kinds of people. There's a beta tester and there's a beta player. I want everybody to be beta testers. I don't want you to just play the game and, oh, I just want to have fun and whatever. Report your bugs. Get on the forums. Make a forum account now. Get in there. Start talking with the community. You know, do fill out those bug reports. Make informed, you know, decisions and choices about how you choose to spend your time playing those alphas and, and, and betas because when it comes down to it, you're going to be paying, you know, 40 to 50 to 60 dollars for a, a brand new product. You want it to be good on day one launch. So it's up to us to really just beat the heck out of that game, beat the living daylights out of the game, break it, you know, do whatever we need to do to it to just make it be awesome, to report those things and to get those fixes out to the devs, you know, before we run into you know, a big problem on, on launch. Obviously, Arma 2 is known for its kind of rough around the edges gameplay. It, it wasn't, a, as far as I remember, a very smooth or solid launch back in, what was it, 2009? Even though I didn't play it too, too much, uh, it, it did turn a lot of people off because of those issues. But again, if there's not enough beta testers versus players, you know, that they can only do so much because you have to remember each computer is going to treat a game differently and the developers are only going to know what, what their office machines and their home machines are pulling. And obviously as PC gamers, we build a whole bunch of custom machines here and, and everything's going to just work really different. So throw in that feedback when it is time to do this community alpha and beta and whatnot. So let's make this one of the best tactical shooters that can ever be, you know? And let's just keep it that way. That's that's the whole thing, because there are very few. Very, very few, and, and that's quite sad in itself. So, uh, so yeah, you know, I don't have a problem with them delaying it till 2013. Uh, just don't pull a Diablo on me. <laughs> I don't want to wait that long for an Arma 3. I am looking forward to it, and, you know, a delay is fine. You know, it's nice, again, that they don't have to deal with a publisher that's got a gun to their head telling them to release it to compete with some other uh, garbage game or something. So with that said, um, moving right along, obviously DayZ coming along every Sunday. For those of you that don't know, I do every Sunday an episode, and uh, latest patches are pretty crazy, it seems. I hear that they've added melee weapons. Finally, you can pick up an axe and uh, swing it. <laughs> it doesn't beat a gun, but uh, it's there. I haven't used it yet, so we'll see how that goes. Maybe we'll get to try it out next, uh, or this upcoming Sunday. We'll see what happens. Uh, there's also something else I have in the works. You'll see that. Um, so beyond that, uh, what other games am I messing around with or working on? The typical, usual stuff. Nothing different there. Obviously, we've got some Tribes of Sen that I'm getting into. Uh, we've got uh, Blacklight Retribution, which is current. World of Tanks. Um, Red Orchestra, once in a while when I can actually get into a good server, like I said, there's maybe two awesome servers that they're usually full all the time, which means it's hard to get into them. Community's not as large as I would like it to be. Uh, Iron Front Liberation 1944, great title. Uh, obviously I have my copy now, but you might be wondering why I don't have any footage of it out. It's mostly because most of the servers are Russian or German. Pings are not so great for me. Uh, when I do get into them, sometimes they have game modes that are not exactly my favorite, like free-for-all. Uh, you know, and, and playing a realistic team-based game like, like Arma or Iron Front, I really don't feel like just having a, a free-for-all deathmatch. Uh, so I'm not so sure. I think the server operators need to get on the ball, and hopefully the game becomes a little bit more popular in North America so I can actually have a nice latency when I want to play the game. Uh, so, you know, I might do some footage for that. We'll see how it goes. Um... Otherwise, I'm still just waiting for other games like uh, Planet Side 2. Definitely going to be all over that. You'll see a lot of footage from me on that one. Uh, Terran Republic for the win. Uh, as far as MechWarrior Online, waiting for that as well. I guess beta is going on for that at the moment. But I, I wasn't invited to it yet. So hopefully that eventually happens. And then once the NDAs you know, lift, we can maybe get some footage of that in there too. They have announced their MechWarrior Founder plans, which is basically uh, some paid plans that you can get to get started with. There's three tiers. There's a Veteran, Elite, and Legendary tier. That's $30, $60, and $120, uh, $120 packages. Uh, what you basically get is early access to MechWarrior Online, which I believe starts on August 7th. Uh, and then if you get the vet tier, it basically 
Uh, sets you up for that. Sets your status apart from the crowd. Get noticed in game and on the MechWarrior online forums, which of course you can have for all the tiers. Gives you one month of premium access. Account owners get 50% more C bills and XP per per match, and then $40 worth of in-game currency for other items and things like that. Now, if you go with the Elite, you get all the same things except you get two months of premium and $80 worth of in-game currency, and then a choice of one Founder's Mech. So you can choose between a Jenner, Hunchback, and Catapult, or Atlas, which will be a special Founder's Mech, will have a special skin, and I believe they earn 25% more currency or C-bills than normal mechs. And then, uh, so you get to choose one of those, there's four. And then there's Legendary, which is a $120 package, same benefits, except you get three months of premium account. Uh, so that's, again, 50% more C-bills and XP per match. So three months of that. Uh, an $80 package, meaning an $80 value of in-game currency, in-game item, uh, four in-game item purchases. And then, then you get all four Founders mechs. So instead of just getting to choose one from the Elite Pack, if you get Legendary for $120, you can get the Jenner, the Hunchback, the Catapult, and the Atlas. All of those will have their own custom founder skin, and they will, like I said, earn you 25% more C-bills while you're playing your game. Now, keep in mind, these, this whole, and oh, on top of that, if you get Legendary, you go, it says, go down in history with your name included among the legends in the MechWarrior Online game credits. So you get your name in the credits. So keep in mind, this is a limited time offer. These mechs, the Founders mechs, once, the game comes out you can usually never get them again same thing kind of happened in world of tanks uh they had some package some gold packages you could buy and they came with tanks that you could never get again except they had released them like temporarily in some of the stores but for the most part there are people out there with world of tanks armor that nobody else can ever get so this is going to be the same thing you know there's going to be these four mechs and they're going to have custom skins while you will be able to get these mechs they're never going to have the skins, and they're never going to be able to get the 25% uh, extra C bill bonus. So, $120 is a lot. You know, even you know, $60 is just a, is a, the price of a normal game. So that's definitely a good value. The $120 for all four mech sets. I'm tempted. I'm tempted. I mean, I I'm gonna know that if I don't have those mechs in my garage one day, I'm just gonna regret it. So we'll see how it goes. It's kind of pricey. I do need a new video card, so I don't know, 120 bucks. But you know, it is for really the really big MechWarrior Online enthusiast. I always think it's a good deal. I don't care if it's a free to play. I'm a I'm a, I'm the kind of person again that will really you know fight tooth and nail with a person who argues that you shouldn't pay anything for a free to play game. Why? We spend sixty dollars on crappy titles that come out every year. What's wrong with spending sixty on a free to play game that actually has more polish on it? Uh, I'm telling you, some of these free-to-plays, I mean, you see them on my channel. Blacklight, Tribes Ascend, Global Agenda, uh, World of Tanks. They have way more polish than a lot of, you know, other games that come out every single year. And they're just, a lot of people aren't noticing them. And I, and I think they deserve more attention in some cases because they get to set their own rules. They get to release when they want to, you know. They don't have to deal with these other... Uh, you know, for the most part, they don't have to deal with these, you know, horrible publishers. Um, so, you know, that's, that's, that's the great thing about it. So, there are those packages. Again, you can go to uh, uh, mechwarrioronlinemercs.com slash founders if you want to take a look at the packages and, and buy them now. It is available for purchase as of today, the 19th. But it's limited, so I'm assuming that once the game goes live, those packs are pretty much toast. But uh, with that said, moving right along, uh, I had made an announcement about a status update video I made about Facebook and Twitter. Uh, a lot of you guys were fairly hostile about the fact that you hated Facebook and Twitter and wanted nothing to do with it, and you thought that it was unfair that I asked people to get on Facebook and Twitter. Well, for those of you who don't want it, I don't care. You don't have to have it. I don't have a gun to your head. It was an announcement for people who already use it. There's a billions of people around the world that use Facebook and Twitter. 
my message was to those people, why not? You know, it's an easy way to use Facebook as a news and update page. YouTube does not give me the tools that I need to communicate and interact with my community. I'm not going to make a video that I have to actually film, render, upload. You know how many how much time that takes? I mean, that ties up my gaming machine to make a a, a status update video. I'm not going to make an update video when I can type in a couple minutes or seconds of text into Facebook and Twitter and have thousands of people figure out what's going on. But, you know, if you don't want to keep up to date that way, whatever. I'm just letting you know right now if there's not an episode of DayZ on a Sunday because my video card blew up and I posted on Facebook and Twitter and you're wondering where it's at, well, now you know. So that's just my little thing there. Again, I'm not forcing anybody to use those services. I don't care if you do or don't, but you might be missing out on status updates. That's all there is because, uh, you know, again, I'm not going to spend the time to make a complete video as a status update. Now, if YouTube has a better feed system that allows me to post an update where you can comment on the update and I can interact with you, like if, if they had like a Facebook style interface as well, which they kind of tried to do with their feed, but it's not, then that's a different story. You know, I could use that, but there's, there's nothing there that just allows me to do it as easy as I could on Twitter and Facebook. So that is that. And, uh, I guess finally, guys, oh, we're nearing 30,000 subscribers, and that's fractastic. That's awesome, and I really want to thank everybody for sticking around, especially the original people who have been uh, here for, for as long as I've had my channel. I mean, it's really cool that you stick around and that you enjoy the channel for the commentary and the quality and not just the game. You know, there's some people that are here just for DayZ or, uh, you know, World of Tanks or Blacklight, you know. That's fine. I don't care. That's cool. It doesn't matter. You know, that's what your sub box is for, to, to keep tabs on whatever videos you want. But, you know, some people who always comment, is like, oh, man, you know, I don't care what game you play. I love your commentary. Like, all the feedback, I re I try to read through a lot of it, and, and it's, it's really positive, good stuff. It keeps me motivated. You know, the more feedback like that that I receive, you know, that's that's going to make me, that's going to push me to continue to do this and to make videos. And, and I always appreciate it because... That's important, you know. I mean, there's, of course, a lot of trolling that goes on or bad negative comments, but I really don't care. It's not, the videos aren't for those people. It really isn't. It's for the, it's for you cool guys out there and people that are just, you know, really enjoying games, that are true gamers, that are passionate about playing games and, and also interested in hearing about what I have to say and rant about. So, you know, keep on doing what you do and, uh, you know, help spread the word, you know, to people that, that, don't know about side strafe <laughs> people that you know really want awesome high quality hd video of of some games some you know well-known games and some not so known games i mean this is the kind of place where you can stick around to find out about new titles that you may have never heard before i mean this is the i'm i've always been the type of person around my personal friends who's always just introduced them to new titles you know I always go up to them and excite them. Oh man, check out this game! You gotta get it and talk them into it. And before you know it, I've I've talked them into buying some, you know, uh, crazy amounts of games. And that's probably why their, their their wallets aren't as full as they would like. Mostly because of me. I have I have suggested some bad games to to them in the past, and I do have some regrets. But <laughs> for the most part, I have fairly decent taste when it comes to new titles. So, you know, it, the, the Side Strafe channel is also here uh, for that. So hopefully you can appreciate that as I'm sure I've referred many of you to World of Tanks and Blacklight Retribution and maybe some to Tribes, although that one's a little bit more well-known. So I think with that said, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining me on this episode of The Strafing Run. Stay tuned for a whole lot more and see you on the next one.